it's midnight. Hello everyone and welcome back to 999. We're here in a giant hospital room, but we're here with everyone. Huh, <sighs> so let's figure out what we're gonna do next. I don't know what our plan is. Then we've still got six hours left, right? Yeah, but honestly, that's not a lot of time. We don't have any time to screw around. Let's get going. Let's... We gotta find the missing parts for the Reds. Let's do it. How are we gonna do that? What do you mean, find? How on earth do you propose we do that? Yeah, seriously, though, like, what, do we have to, like, run around and look? We've looked everywhere in this room. Okay. That only leaves one place to look. Which is? One. Uh, well, not just one. Oh, that's not what you said just there. Oh, well. Hmm? That happens. Wait. All oh, right, the door. Don't tell me you mean we need to search all of the other rooms. Then that'll take forever. Don't freak out. We've already searched four of them. <laughs> No, we don't. That's only leaves like 50 of them. It's Four fine. Four rooms? We just have to split up the rest between the eight of us. If each of us can do six rooms apiece, we'll have the other 48 rooms cleared in no time. Jesus Christ. Okay, honestly, though, this is really what we're doing? There are 48 other rooms. Oh, my God. Her earlier experiences had apparently not encouraged Lotus to trust Seven. Seven scratched his head awkwardly. Uh, maybe? <laughs> Same. <laughs> Oh, they don't like each other, hey? All right, so everyone knows which area they're searching? No? Well, I'll figure it out. Yeah. Yes! Junpei was chosen to search the rooms on the starboard side, moving from fore to aft. Oh, no. If you've ever played Final Fantasy XIV with me, you'll know that I don't know what those mean. But I do. We'll all meet up when the clock goes off again. Four is the front, aft is the back, I believe. Ah, uh, how about in that room with all the beds? But don't ask me about starboard and larboard, because I have no damn idea. Yeah. Sounds straightforward enough. Okay. I'll shout if I find any of the components we need. All right, you do that. I hope we can find them within the time limit. Well, yeah. If we can't, then we'll just have to come up with another plan. All right. Right. Man, old Bandcamp Edgeworth, he's so positive. Then let's do this. Let's do it. Scrabble, 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 okay. The details decided they left to begin searching. Out into the hallway they went, each to the rooms they'd been assigned. However, dot, 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 what happened? Uh-oh. Something happened? Oh. From far away, Jinpei heard the bell ring. It did so only once. It was 1 a.m. It's 1. I better get back to the others. Dang, so it's already been an hour. So who knows what's happened? I wonder if anyone found anything. He jogged through the entrance of the large hospital room to find six of the others already there. Huh? What's going on? All right, who's missing? Ace, Santa, Clover, June, Seven, and Lotus. <gasps> Where's Bandcamp Edgeworth? They had gathered in front of door number eight. Or perhaps, to be accurate, they had gathered in front of the red next to door number eight. What are they doing over there? Oh no, they're not going to go in there and leave me, are they? Had one of them found the missing piece? What happened, guys? Yes, yeah, seriously. It was June who answered him. Jumpy, look! She was pointing at the red. He pushed through the others until he stood in front of it. Oh, there it is, it's working. Immediately, he knew what she had meant. Vacant? Wait, so do you, they fixed it? Jinpei sighed. Come on, guys. Who was it? I thought we were supposed to yell if we found it. Yeah, honestly, who did it? Well... Well? Jinpei wondered why she was hesitating. The others looked as confused as June, but kept their mouths shut. What the hell? What is up with you guys? Yeah, what happened? Don't leave me out of the loop. They all knew something he didn't, and Junpei wasn't about to leave things that way. Finally, Lotus frowned and spoke. Well, that's the thing. We don't know. What do you mean? You don't know. When I got back, it was already like this. It... it just fixed itself? There was no one else here. Huh. That means I was the first one back, but... But... The missing parts were already back in the red. The... What? That's strange. Let me see. But where's Snake? Jinpei looked at the bottom of the red again, just to make sure. 
The slot that had been open on the bottom was now covered with metal. You're right. It's in there. Huh. What about the other two? Yes, yeah, so, yeah, what about them? They're the same. They're working now. Okay. Let me take a look. That's strange, isn't it? Jinpei quickly examined the other two boxes. It's just as you said. Yeah. Satisfied that they were also repaired, but still very confused, he returned to the others. All right, I, I just want to be sure here. Right. Nobody has any idea what the hell happened here, right? But Snake's not here. Correct. So I wonder if that has anything to do with it. None. Asin Jun nodded silently. Seven raised his hands as if to say, not me, and Santa just shrugged. <sighs> What's wrong, girl? Girl, where's your brother? Only Clover lowered her head and did nothing. Huh. Wait a minute. Yeah, girl, where is he? That was when he noticed. Where's Snake? Yeah, dude. Uh, honestly, kind of important. Junpei swept his eyes across the room a second time, but Snake was nowhere to be seen. Does that mean that he found them? Might have done. I've no idea. There's nothing to suggest it. But nothing to suggest he didn't either. Yeah, we'd have to ask him for sure. I don't suppose we'll know until we can ask him in person. Yep. Well, whatever he did or didn't do, he's pretty damn late. What the hell is he up to? Well, I mean, to be fair, he's blind. Maybe he's lost. Like, it, it was it really the best idea for him to go off alone? I thought maybe for sure he'd go with Clover. Yeah, well, that seems likely. Dude can't see. I don't know why he gets around in the first That's place. That's what I'm saying. Like, dude. Clover raised her head. No! That's impossible! Huh? What's wrong? Suddenly, she was shouting. Yeah, my brother's blind, but he's got really great hearing. He can get around as well as anyone who can see. Well, no, I believe you, girl. Don't worry. We'll go find him. So he... He couldn't get lost. That's impossible. Well, I mean, in a ship that you don't know, full of doors that you're going into that you're not familiar with, I, I, I feel like it's still possible. Clover had started to shake, and the knuckles of her hands had gone white. <laughs> no, don't cry, girl. It's all right. She spun around, but before she did, Jinpei noticed tears welling up in her eyes. I'm gonna go look for him! Well, I don't know why it took you this long, to be fair. The words were barely out of her mouth when she began to run. Hey, uh, hold on, Clover. Wait! Jinpei cried out to her, but he was too slow. She kept going, and before anyone else could react, she was gone. Well, that didn't work. Oh, gosh, I hope she's okay. Damn it. What should we do now? I don't know. Well, the red is working now. Yeah, but I guess we're not going to wait for them to see if they're okay? No! We're not leaving two people behind! We should go look for them! Hmm. Oh, man. This ain't good. I mean, to be fair, we probably need as many people available to open the doors, too, so it we should look for them. Oh, yes. What an excellent idea. <laughs> we just wasted a bunch of time looking for some piece of electronic junk. Now let's waste some more by looking for a couple of idiots. No, I, I see what... I knew that he would say this. I knew it. But, like, dude, we probably should go look for them. Then remain here if you feel you must. But there's no time. All right. We've only five hours left. Oh, are we going to split here? Like, maybe half of us are going to go look for them, and then half are going to go through a door. Junpei and the others nodded to one another and took off at a run. Okay. Dot, dot, dot. In front of the stairs that led to B-Deck, they decided to split up. Let's split up. All right. All right. I'll take this direction. Then I shall look that way. Okay. I'll be over here. Let's see you all later. All right. I hope everyone's all right. Soon only two of them were left. Those two were Junpei and Jun, who had been a few steps behind the others. All right. We should go too. Yes, let's go. Let's go. But where should we start? I have a no clue. Let's see. Directional things, not my bag. Oh, no. Uh, burr, burr, burr. I don't know where to go. Uh, is, is, hmm. I have no idea. Uh, I didn't even know there was a casino here. I kind of want to see that. How about the casino on B deck? I, I, have we even seen that before? Okay, let's go, Jumpy. Am I just not, am I just not thinking correctly? What casino? Dude, let's go play. They took up off the stairs at a run. Before they knew it, they were there. 
So was Lotus. Oh, hey, day girl, what, what is going on with you? She was leaning against the wall, examining her nails. Uh, ma'am, aren't you supposed to be looking? Hey, what do you think you're doing? Yeah, what are you doing, just loitering around here? She glanced up at him, unimpressed. Isn't it obvious? I'm looking for Snake. It, it, it truly. I'm just not seeing it. <laughs> oh, is that a joke? I'm just not seeing it. Never mind. Really? Maybe you need to look harder. What do you mean? I don't think that's the problem. <laughs> She's so smarmy. Oh, by the way. Yeah? I've got a proposal for you two. No. Care to hear? Oh, me? shit. Girl, this is hardly the time, but go ahead. Let's listen. I mean, to be fair, we're going to die anyway, so. Uh, okay. What is it? Well, I don't like to beat around the bush, so I'll get right to no, it. No, I, I know you don't. That's kind of why I like you. Why don't we team up? What do you mean, girl? Team up. Okay. Yeah. What? You need me to explain it to you? <laughs> I'm saying, why don't we go through a numbered door? Just us three. I don't know about that. Even if we wanted to, that's impossible. Why? Jumpy's bracelet number is five, mine is six, and yours is eight. Yeah, does that correspond with any of the numbers we even have available? I don't think so. Our digital root would be one. Oh, oh true. Okay, thank God she knows, and I didn't have to figure that out by myself. Five, six, eight equals 19. One plus nine is 10. One plus zero is one. But there's no number one door in the large hospital room. True, so we can't do it. The only doors there are three, seven, and eight. So we'll have to figure out who we need. Then we add another person. Hmm. Huh? Well, who are we gonna take? Who? What, isn't that easy? What do you mean? Seven. What, okay. Oh, if we add seven. Uh-huh. Five plus six plus eight plus seven equals 26. Thank God all these kids know how to do the, the math. The digital root of 26, two plus six equals eight. Boomer mom does not know how to do the math. Then the four of them could go through the number eight door, but... Wait a minute. What about the other four? That's the, that's the thing we have to think about, too. Like, if they can't go through a door, then it's useless. Ace, Snake, Santa, and Clover. Right. Well, why don't you add them up? I don't even think I can remember their numbers, <laughs> to be honest. That was simple enough. One plus two plus three plus four equals ten. Oh, right. They were one, two, three, four. Jesus, I didn't one realize plus that. zero equals one. Right. The digital root for those four would be one. Yeah, so they can't go anywhere. That's right. And you know the number one door isn't in the big hospital room, right? Yeah, we need as many people through these doors as possible, I think. Of course I know that. Okay. No! Our... Are you saying you'd leave them behind? Yeah, that just leaves them stuck here. What are they supposed to do? Of course not. What kind of woman do you think I am? Well, I, don't, I mean, we're trying to figure that out, to be honest. Once we get off the ship, we could come back and rescue them, I couldn't we? I don't think so, girl. With the way that this has been set up, probably the minute we leave this ship, it's probably gonna, like, explode or something. Like, come on, haven't you played Dangan' Rumpa? Then we wouldn't really be leaving them behind. No, that, no, that, hell no. They, they would hate our asses for that. Don't try to lie to us. I don't think so, girl. I don't think you do anything of the sort. Really? Why do you think that? Hmm? You remember, don't you? We have less than five hours left. Even if we manage to escape... Yeah, how are we gonna come back in time to get them? There's no way we could come back to rescue them in less than five hours. Nah, she's definitely on her own agenda, I get it. Well, you never know until you try. <laughs> she just wants to get out of here and she probably feels that we're the smartest ones. No, no, you're not thinking this through. Even if we brought Seven with us, we wouldn't be able to get off the ship. The four of us couldn't open door nine. That, oh, that's also true. It is hidden, but an exit can be found. The only way to, to solve this in the end is to have the people necessary for nine. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a nine. Oh, Jesus Christ, you're right. So we have to yeah. have everybody. Yeah, that's right. Like, uh, there's going to be no way we can do it. The digital route for the four of us would be eight, so we'd have to add ace to make nine. Okay, so we'd need at least ace with us. That's right. Unless we bring ace too, we'll be stuck. And then what are we going to do? Lotus we'll scratch the back of her ear. Oh. Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. We're just going to leave, like, Santa, Clover, and Snake by themselves. Unfortunate. That's all you have to say? <laughs> she is strange, but I like her. She didn't sound particularly bothered by what Junpei said. Nor did she seem particularly surprised. Well, let's try and find another way, okay? Yeah, yeah. A way to get out of here with all eight of us. That would be good. That's impossible. Are 
Are you being serious? Well, that was the goal, wasn't it? And you do know that only five people, at most, can go through one of the numbered doors, right? Yeah. The number nine isn't going to be an exception to that rule. Regardless, at least three people will get left behind. Well, maybe, but like maybe once we open the nine door, it'll be a way for all of us to leave at some point. Huh. Oh, but I, maybe she's right, though. Yeah, I, I guess that makes sense. Ugh. Well, I hate that it does. The moment he said it, Junpei felt a chill run down his spine. No. Wait just a second. Yeah, yeah? You're skipping over a really big detail. What's that, Junpei? Yes, what she said was true, but... How Lotus could remain cavalier about so terrifying a prospect was beyond him. Is that really okay? I don't know. I don't think so. That means three people will die in the end. Are you okay with that? Hmm. That's... That's just... That's really bad. We don't want that. I mean, honestly, what? there's no way we're going to get them all through, is there? But I really don't want anybody to die. Lotus's forehead furrowed. Do you think I could have a moment alone? Ma'am, you can have as many moments as there you want. There's some things I need to think about. Uh, you know, don't bother looking for Snake, though, or anything. Jeez. All right, girl. She's, she's a strange one, isn't she? I'm not so sure about her yet. I, I do like her, though. There's a lot of things about her that I like. Junpei and Jun turned and began walking away from Lotus. That didn't turn out to be a very pleasant conversation. No, it sure didn't. Yeah. Junpei's heart felt heavy and his steps sluggish. But he told himself pessimism would get them nowhere. Well, uh, regardless. Let's go look somewhere else. So he forced himself to smile and turned to Jun. Let's just focus on finding Snake for now. Yeah, okay. yeah. Let's, let's. He's so positive. Like, surely he's going to keep everybody together. Yes, you're right. We can think about those other things later. Okay, it'll be fine. Yeah. Jinpei nodded. All right, where should we go next? Oh, maybe this is a chance to see where everyone is and then make like a decision about something. Yeah, because that, that option is gone. So we probably have to look at everything. Let's go take a look at the first class cabin. It's really close. Okay, so in this way, we'll probably get everyone's ideas of what's happening. And then probably what we're gonna have to do later is, is choose a door, I'm assuming. They turned around and took off down the hallway to the left. Who's down here? Outside of the first class cabin, they found Clover. She was standing in front of the wall. She was staring at a meaningless point on the wall, her eyes blank. What should Jinpei do? Talk to her, of course. Are you alright? Clover, you alright there, darling. He did his best to sound friendly, but Clover didn't respond. <laughs> oh, she's sad. Look, I know you're really worried, but... Um... Well, we're here to help. He could think of no words to say that didn't sound hollow and fake. Jinpei hesitated. Clover was so consumed by worry and fear that Jinpei feared it would crush her. Her actions didn't surprise him. She had suddenly lost her brother, who she seemed to have been very close to. No. Oh no. Oh girl. Her voice was thin and barely audible. No. Maybe they're used to being together a lot, I think. Hmm? No. Oh. Hmm? I said leave me alone! <laughs> okay. Suddenly she was screaming. You're so annoying! Just go away and leave me alone! Just looking at you guys is pissing me off! I'm sorry, girl. Go oh, no. away, okay? Just go somewhere else! Stop bothering me! Jesus. Okay, bye. <laughs> Jinpei was taken aback. Uh, um... Girl, we're trying to help. Such anger and hate. Jin's eyes had gone wide with surprise as well. Why are you still here? Didn't you hear me? God, I can't unhear me you in this. Huh? Fine, forget it. If you aren't gonna leave, then I'll just... All right, let's go, June. We're going, we're going, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, well that didn't go well. They turned and left Clover. <laughs> oh girl, you're gonna be all right? As they did, Junpei glanced back over his shoulder to see Clover wiping tears from her face. Oh. Well, shoot, we were only trying to help. Clover had driven home the misery of their situation, but Junpei told himself that getting depressed would get him nowhere but depressed. <sighs> we really need to find Snake, for Clover's sake. Yeah, we sure do. He did his best to push away the misery and depression and forced a smile. So, uh, where do you think we should go next? Man, this, everyone's just a barrel of cheer. All right, uh, back, hmm, which one haven't we done? Have we done the hallway with all the rooms? Let's go there. 
Hey, uh, why don't we go back to Sea Deck? And then we'll end at the, uh, well, like, the last one will be the hospital. We can take a look at that hallway with all the rooms. I mean, that's, okay, what, that's where we left going, him, then. isn't it? Like, that was the last place we found him. Together, they ran down the stairs. Oh, it's Ace. Hey, friend. Ahead of them, farther down the hallway, they spotted Ace. Hey, Snake! Where are you? Yeah, that's a good idea. Answer me if you're there. What should Jinpei do? Uh, let's, let's go. Let's talk to him. With Jun in tow, Jinpei jogged up to Ace. Hearing their footsteps, he turned to greet them. Ah, hello there. Hi, friend. Snake is... Well, that's obvious, isn't it? A little. I assume you haven't found him yet? No. Yeah, it doesn't seem like you're having any luck either. I really wonder where he could have gone. Well, wherever he's disappeared to, we must find him as quickly as we can. For Clover's sake. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Right. Jin's face looked kind of enraptured. By the way, um, do you think Clover and Snake are really siblings? Well, that's what they said. Uh, why would you say that? Why would you say that? The question seems somehow odd to Jinpei. Why? <laughs> Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Is it? They don't look alike at all. I mean, that can happen. Ace looked at him for a moment and then spoke. Yes, you know, now that you mention it, they don't. Well, still that can happen. Could be at a different parent somewhere or possibly adoption. Now that you mention it? Still, there are a great many siblings who do not look like one another. That is true, and clearly she dyes her hair, so there's that. It certainly isn't rare. Jinpei wasn't sure why or even if he was seeing what he thought he was, but he could have sworn that Ace's face tightened as he spoke. At any rate, we really must find Snake as soon as possible. Okay. The clock is ticking. We really can't afford to waste any time. Oh, no, for sure. Let's get on it. <sighs> well, Jinpei, honestly. Very well. Let's get back to the search, shall we? Yeah. You can leave this area to me. Okay. All right. Back Let's to go, the hospital, Jumpy. then. At Jin's urging, they left. They found themselves back at the stairs, but Jinpei's mind was in turmoil. Something about that was... <sighs> I'll think on it later. No, I agree that it was a little bit weird, so that's clearly something we're gonna have to think about later. Like Ace said, finding Snake is our top priority. Okay, so let's do it. Jinpei did his best to clear his mind. All right, where should we go next? Well, there's only one place left. Why don't we go back to the big hospital room? Maybe he's there now? Like, maybe we all left and he's there. Okay, let's go then. They turned and headed back towards the large hospital room. Hey, wait. That's... Huh? Oh, hey, girl. What you doing? On their way to the large hospital room, Jinpei and Jun noticed Santa standing next to the number three door. Santa? You want to go through that? Jinpei paused. What should Jinpei do? Talk to him? Of course. Gotta find out everything. Jinpei and Jun walked up to Santa. W what are you doing? What's up? What? You can't tell? I'm checking out the red. For what, though? We're supposed to be looking for Snake. Why? Is there something bothering you? That too. What? It's not bothering you? What? Huh? This... the guts of this red. Right? Why wouldn't you wonder who the hell put it back in here? Well, isn't that why we're trying to find Snake? To maybe rule that out? Yeah, that's true. I agree with you, but... Well, I'm curious too, but... I think we gotta find him first. Who do you think did it? Santa's eyes narrowed as he looked at June. She shook her head. I don't know. Could have been a planned thing. Like, it could have been planned to, to get us all the way into the hallways. And then someone came, like, and snuck it in here, but... Well, not what sure. about you, Junpei? It's more of a dang and romp thing. think fix this thing for us? And right now, the Zero appears to be mostly absent from here. Unlike, like, Junko and, and Monokuma and all that. Oh, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know who to pick here. Maybe Zero did it. Maybe he's here watching us. I think it was probably Zero. Why? I don't know. Isn't that obvious? He's the guy who set this whole thing up. You don't think that should mean the opposite? Seems to me like that means he didn't do it. Yeah? I mean... Who do you think took that stuff out in the first place? Well, probably Zero. He might have done it to waste our time. Yeah, exactly. 
then why the hell would he put him back in after he'd taken them out himself? No, I know. I'm just. I didn't want to. It just doesn't make sense. I didn't want to blame anybody else. Why do all that work? Huh. <sighs> yeah. I also like it when I guess they argue. That makes sense. So it's part of what my happened then? Who put that stuff back in the rents? Hmm. Jinpei furrowed his brow. So, in other words, one of us is the person who fixed the red. Santa grinned. Bingo! We have a winner! Yup. But if that's true, then the person who did it doesn't want the rest of us to know that they fixed it. Okay. Yeah. But why? I, that I don't know. No idea. Maybe if they can clean on that, it means we'd find out something else. Something bad. Hmm. Something bad? Maybe. I don't know. But whatever it is, it's gotta be worth hiding. True. Hmm. Of course. Of course? It could have something to do with Snake's disappearance. I... Well, isn't that why we were trying to find him? You think maybe they did something to Snake? That's what I'm wondering now. Yeah. <sighs> oh, boy. So now it's like a whole bunch of conspiracy all over again. Like, you can't trust anyone. Jinpei stared at Santa. There was something about him that made Jinpei wary. At first, he'd assumed that the other man wasn't terribly clever, but Jinpei was beginning to think he would need to reevaluate that assessment. There's definitely something about Santa too, isn't there? When Santa spoke again, his voice was quiet. Look, if you trust anybody in this game, you're gonna lose. <sighs> but I like to trust. Uh, no, but he's right, because look, look, look what Danganronpa has done to me. You've gotta be careful. Yeah, but it can't be every man for himself either, or we're fucked. The person you trust the most could turn out to be the one who stabs you in the back. Oh, that's probably foreshadowing. Probably about June, isn't it? Oh, great. With that depressing suggestion, he turned and quietly walked away. And that's that, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Sense is always a ray of sunshine, though we expected that from him. Jinpei and Jun looked at one another and smiled awkwardly. What do we do now? Dot, dot, dot. Where would they go next? Well, we've been to all these places. Here's the thing. And everyone told us to go. Is there a reason to go back to them twice? I'm not sure. Everyone said they'd have it. Clover definitely didn't want to talk to us. Lotus said she wanted time alone. Ace said, forget it. I guess we're finished. They looked everywhere they could think of, but Snake was nowhere to be found. Dot, dot, dot. Snake hasn't been anywhere we've searched. You mean loitering for you? Lotus looked around at six frustrated faces and spoke. And we can't keep looking for him. Wherever he is, it's not here. Okay. We need to get moving. Oh, I agree, though. Jinpei couldn't disagree with what she was saying. Snake seemed to have completely disappeared. There was no point to wasting any more time. The others seemed to be having similar thoughts, but they stayed silent. Finally, Seven spoke. We don't got a choice. Lotus is right. Really? Is that what we're voting on, I suppose? We're not gonna find Snake. Oh dear, I hope he's okay. There's a problem, though. What's that? We've gotta figure out who's gonna go through which door. Oh, okay. I had a feeling this was coming up. Yes, I have a proposal. Uh, again? Because the first one was so good. <laughs> she walked back and forth across the floor, her heels clicking against the wood. Finally, she stopped. Why don't we decide on one person to sacrifice? What are you, girl, you've got some ideas here. I gotta hand it to you. Sacrifice? What are you talking about? Well, perhaps that's a bit of a harsh word, but yes. You've all figured it out by now, haven't you? What's that? We can't all make it through those doors. Oh, shoot. I wonder if that's why Snake was taken away. If we split into two teams of four and three people, respectively, then three people will be left behind. Okay. If we split into two teams of five and two people, respectively, then two people will be left behind. Right. But if we split into two groups of three and leave one person out, then only one person will be left behind. Okay. Leaving behind three people with two teams of four and three. Uh, I... Oh, I don't know. Leaving behind three people with two teams of four. Here's my thoughts on this. If we do this, 
is there a, a chance that that the three people that are left behind can find Snake and go on? Because that automatically seems like the wrong idea, right? To leave all those people behind. You'd probably want to take with you as many as possible. But is that what the game wants us to think? Leave behind three people, two teams of four and three. I don't know. It wasn't pleasant, but she was right. There wasn't any way that the numbers worked out. If one group was four, the other group would always have a digital route that didn't match a door. When Seven spoke, his voice was strained. Then... You're saying we gotta decide who's gonna stay behind. But maybe if they find Snake, they can get through. Yes, we do. Oh dear. Given our circumstances, it's logically and morally the best solution. Is it? If the other six are to survive, then one person has to sacrifice themselves. What? No! That's too cruel! Well, I mean, what else are we gonna do? What's so cruel about it? Dang it, Rob has hardened me, you guys. To... to just sacrifice someone like that? Well, I mean, it's... Ugh. Then what's your plan? Maybe we should sacrifice two people instead of just one. That's not what I meant! We shouldn't sacrifice anyone! And we may have to in the end. I, I told you, that's impossible. Wake up! Gosh. Whoa, whoa. Calm down, you two. Yeah, honestly. Santa stepped between Lotus and June. Look, what Lotus is trying to say is... You should aim to bring the greatest amount of happiness to the greatest amount of people, right? Well, I guess, in a way. Exactly. That's how democracy works. And for that reason, I think the only fair way to decide who will be sacrificed is through a vote. Uh... What do you think? Oh, God. No! That's terrible! I don't even know what to say. I'm not asking you. Shut up. <laughs> oh, God. What about you, Santa? Me? Well, I agree. I guess. Well, oh god, did I pick wrong? All right, that's oh, one vote four. Counting mine, that's two. Seven. I can't say I agree with you, but... It might be the least crappy way? We don't exactly have a choice. Not really. If we don't do something, we're all gonna die. Yeah. Oh, glad to see you get it. If I can get one more vote, then it's decided. Okay. What about you, Clover? <laughs> Is she even gonna be able to answer? God, I didn't even know she was here. Clover had moved away from the group and was sitting on one of the beds. Her whole body drooped. Junpei didn't know if she'd even heard Lotus's proposal. Hey, Clover. You're all right there, girl. Lotus walked over to Clover and gently laid a hand on her shoulder. Your brother has to be behind one of the numbered doors. Wait, you think so? We've searched everywhere, but we didn't find him. Doesn't that mean he has to have gone through one of them somehow? But how could he have done that and lived? That was the whole premise. <laughs> I don't think that's possible, though, unless she- Oh, you're not manipulating her to do something, are you? I don't like that. Clover slowly lifted her face. Let's go look for him together, okay? If we sacrifice one person- Oh, wow. We can go look for him. Yeah, she, she, would, she would be a good politician, I guess. You agree with me, right? <laughs> Damn, girl, you got that manipulation on a leak. Okay. okay. Clover nodded once. <laughs> the motion carries. All right. We've been outnumbered. Lotus spun around and walked towards Junpei. Now, let's start a vote to... What? That won't be necessary. Wait, what? Hello? Ace had barely spoken for Lotus's entire speech, and then everyone jumped a little. Six pairs of eyes turned to look at him. He didn't seem to notice or even care. I will stay. That should solve our problem. Oh, no, a no, Ace. No, wait a minute. Ugh. Wait. Uh... Everyone moan at once. Ace, what are you saying? No, you can't do that. That won't solve anything. Jin's voice shook and she looked around desperately for someone to agree with her. Ace simply looked at her. June, I'm afraid you may have misunderstood me. What? I said I would stay, but I never said I would sacrifice myself. No, true. He's just saying he'll stay for like the group. Huh? I trust you. Each and every one of you. Okay. I believe you'll come back for me. Oh, Ace, jeez. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's optimistic, and then there's just nuts. Those doors only go one way. You go in, you don't come out. If we go through them... You won't be able to return, correct? Yeah. Yeah. 
True, but that will not be the case once you've escaped from the ship. That's the same thing Lotus said earlier. What? Please, I beg you. Once you've escaped, come back and rescue me. Ideally, within the time limit Zero has given oh, us. Oh no, he knows that's gotta be a death sentence. No, that's ridiculous. There's no way we could get back in time. Finally, Junpei could hold his tongue no longer. We've only got five hours left. We don't even know where the hell we are. How on earth are we gonna find someone to come and rescue you? True. Then, perhaps you would prefer to stay instead of me? Uh. Or perhaps you would be willing to leave Jun behind? Oh, here we go. I had a feeling this was gonna come up. Ace's voice was dignified without a hint of cruelty or malice. Junpei had no rebuttal. You see? There's no other choice. Then I see we've come to our conclusion. Go on. Don't worry yourselves about me. No, Ace. Oh, no. Go, quickly. Have I picked the wrong ending and stuff? Like, the wrong way? Because I did want to get to know him. I guess we'll have to do that in another one, maybe. Jinpei stood frozen by indecision, unable to move. Uh, this sucks. <laughs> this really sucks. <sighs> Jun bit her lips so hard that Junpei feared she would break the skin. Santa stood against a wall, calm and aloof. Seven tore his beanie from his head and turned it over anxiously in his hands. Only Clover stared at Ace with an expression Junpei was unable to decipher. Lotus's attitude, however, was different from the others. Good. Let's accept his kind offer then. Wow, she really is just blunt. She smiled, her eyes bright. Ace answered with a smile of his own. Good. I think this is the best for me. Oh, God, it's because they're old, right? Let me tell you, as an old person, sometimes you just don't sweat the small shit anymore. Perhaps I'll be able to take a nap. Oh, my God. For all, forever. It may be my age, but I get tired so easily these oh days. Oh, my God. That is the mood of the century. As he spoke, Ace lowered himself down to the floor next to one of the beds. You know, there is a bed you could... Okay. You could just lay on the bed. Uh oh, I, no, I don't like that. I don't like that noise. From somewhere deep in the ship, Junpei suddenly heard the screeching of metal on metal. It was almost as if the ship were screaming. Would it really hold until their time limit was up? Already, D deck was flooded. In the sudden silence, the only sound was the sad metal wail of the ship. Unsurprisingly, it was Lotus who spoke first. Well, what are you waiting for? What? We're wasting time. Why don't we hurry it up? Okay. As if a spell had been broken, the others all began to talk at once. You're right. We should get going. That's all we can do right now. Okay. Seven! Seriously. Honestly, I was getting kind of sick of listening to you guys talk. Oh, <laughs> You too, Santa? I... I have to find my brother. I know, dear. W wait! All of you! Let's just calm down and think about this. There has to be a way to get everyone out. There has to be. Right, Jumpy? I know you want that, darling, but I'm not sure. Say something. Oh, dear. Yeah, let's think. There's gotta be another way. His words sounded hollow and fake. Fine. Forget about it. I'll figure it out on my own. Wait, girl, where are you going? She spun around and ran towards Ace. He had slumped down next to the bed when June grabbed his arm and pulled. Ace! Ace, please stand up. You can't give up yet. Oh, this is sad. We just have to sit down together and think about this. We'll figure out a way that we can all get out of here. Then it happened. <sighs> What's wrong? Uh-oh. Ace fell forward. He slumped over onto the wooden floor, his body folded in half like a boxer out cold. Well, that's not really what the image shows, but what happened? Ace! June cried out and dropped to her knees beside him. She put her arm around his neck and did her best to lift him up. What happened? Ace, say something! She shook him frantically. His eyes fluttered open. I'm all right. You tired there, boy. You all right? His voice was weak and slightly slurred. How are you all right? This. He held out his left arm and slowly opened his hand. A syringe? What's that there, dear? In it was a syringe in a small vial. The vial was empty. It had only recently been emptied. A few drops clung to the side. There was a label taped to the side of the container. 
It read, Soparil Beta. Soparil Beta? Soparil Beta? What does this do? Did... did you use this? Yes. It's just... anesthetic. I'll be... fine. You did it to go to sleep? Anesthetic? I found it earlier. What? While we were searching the... hospital rooms. What? You didn't say anything. I thought it might be useful. Later. Oh, I see. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be... using it on... myself. He's gonna put himself to sleep? Why did you do this? Didn't I tell you? I'd like to take a nap. Oh, God. I really am very tired. Junpei knew that wasn't why he'd done it. Ace had injected himself with anesthetic to forestall Junpei and Jun's attempt to bring him along. If he couldn't move, there was nothing they could do. He'd injected himself so that they would be forced to leave him behind. Ace! Oh, no! Hmm? Is there something you want to say? I just like to sleep a little. Could you keep it down? Oh, gosh. No! Don't, Ace! Don't fall asleep! Ah, you feel warm. Oh. So comfortable. I think I'll have a nice dream. Ace's eyelids droop further and further, almost as though he were... Dying. Ace! Ace! She shook his shoulder again and again, but this time he didn't respond. <sighs> Only the gentle rising and falling of his chest told him that he was alive. Jinpei was relieved to see he was, in fact, still breathing. Uh, let's get him up on a bed. Oh, dear. He lifted Ace up off the floor and laid him on the bed he'd be leaning against. When Jinpei turned around, Lotus gave him a look of pity. Well, we really don't have a choice now. I mean, you did this, to be honest. You made this happen. We can't let his sacrifice go to waste. Oh, dear. Right? <sighs> like you even mean that. Yeah, really? You say something? Dang, you're a stone-cold bitch. No, nothing. I mean, I kind of respect it, but also, man. Felt wrong, but he had to agree. Then suddenly, Santa spoke. Yeah. We're not done choosing yet, are we? No, we're not. Huh? What do you mean? Now we have to figure out who's going through what door. Well, we haven't decided who's going in what door. True. Ah, oh, yes. Yes, that's true. <sighs> Enough of this screwing around. Let's decide. Don't screw, screw around too you much. You first, Lotus. Which door do you want? I, um... I want door number eight. Okay. It's the same number as my bracelet number. Right. Got it. You're eight. You're next seven. Which one do you want? Okay. I'll take seven. Of course. I can't get along with that old lady. Uh, yeah, he hates her. <laughs> what? What did you just say? Man, everybody on here calling her old. What you should be calling her is a stone cold bitch. Her face distorted by rage, Lotus took a step towards seven. He threw up his hands and made a face like a child caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Who, me? I, I didn't say nothing. Oh, wow. You that big old guy and you're just scared of her. Okay, I mean, she, to be fair, oh, she is terrifying. Next time. <laughs> oh, she's fucking terrifying. <laughs> she shot him a glare that would have melted steel, then turned and stalked off. All right, who's next? I don't even know anymore. Santa's gaze moved across the three people left. Finally, they stopped on Junpei. Junpei, which door do you want? Um... Oh, they picked seven and eight? What if I pick three? Does that mean I go without either of those two? At last, Junpei's mind was already made up. I don't know. Who's going with me on three? I'm trying to think. If it's three, I'm trying to do math. That means it would be... Well, I guess we're going to have to figure this one out in the next one. Sorry to put a cliffhanger on it, but I think I know which door I'm going to pick. <laughs> um, I hope you guys are enjoying this so much. I made this one a little longer because if we do have episodes with just dialogue, I think I'm going to try to make them a little bit longer than normal just so we can uh, not take too, too long and have too many episodes just with dialogue. I would like to have the puzzles in there as well. So I'll do my best to pace that out. Um, yeah, in the next one, 
Let's pick a tour. I think I know which one I'm gonna do, but you'll have to see in the next episode. Toodaloo, guys.